Hey guys, today I'm going to start building a really cheap lithium ion power bank, essentially. Uh, it'll be 12 volts, so it can run things like power inverters off of it. And it'll be something close to 18 amp hours. Uh, not quite, but pretty close. Uh, so, I've got a couple of laptop batteries. Now, the way that I found these, I went on to Amazon and I looked up 12 cell laptop battery. And you're basically just looking for the cheapest one that has halfway decent reviews. And I've gotten two of these here. And they are about 10 bucks a piece. So, uh, unfortunately I couldn't find them again. Uh, if I can find them, I'll put links in the description. Uh, the other thing you're going to need is, um, well, you really only need one of these. But, uh, these are lipo balance extension leads uh, which are meant for the RC car industry here but what I'm going to do with it is cut off this uh, female connector here or is it no that's the male connector never mind so cut off the male connector and uh, attach that onto the battery so you'll end up with a cable something like this and uh, these ends will be soldered to the battery itself and that's going to be your balance um, so, anyhow, let's go ahead and open up this box. I've actually already disassembled one of these batteries. Um, but, I'm mean, going to at least try to attempt to show you how I've disassembled this particular type of battery. They're all going to be slightly different. Uh, anyhow, let's open this one up. Alright, so we'll go ahead and open this up here. Uh, they've decided to actually put this in anti-static foam and things kind of bag so uh, like I said I did take one of these apart and they do have a little bit of circuitry in them not very much uh, so anyhow there's your ratings on that 10.8 volts at 8800 milliamp hours which is about 95 watt hours and as I've said I've got two of these things and here is the other one its current state. Now, I've charged this battery so far is all I've really done. And the reason why I'm going to charge actually both of these uh, is so I can get them even so I don't have to worry about when I'm connecting these two batteries together that they uh, discharge into each other or do something like that that I wouldn't really want to happen. So we do want them even, uh, evenly charged. So I got these, uh, got this one charged up and I will charge this one once I get it open. Uh, so anyhow, next up we'll actually be tearing this thing open. Alright, so start taking this thing apart. I'm going to take the little rubber feet off because when I make a case for these batteries, I'm probably going to use these little rubber things on the bottom of it. So this will probably be useful in the future. And what I'm about to show you is definitely not the right way to take apart a battery. Uh, this is the completely destructive and not really that safe way to do it. Um, <laughs> first thing you want to do is check and see if your battery has screws. This one doesn't. I've checked underneath the sticker and stuff. There's no screws in this. Um, so it's pretty much glued together. And it's going to make it slightly difficult to open up. But usually, uh, I'm going to try to do this time, is start along this sort of little crack here. Start cutting there, and I'm going to try to snap this sort of end piece off, and I'll show you what happens after that. It's a little bit hard to work around the camera, really, but hopefully I can get it. And basically, I'm just going to keep doing this and snapping off pieces. Not really cutting the pieces off, I'm more breaking them off than anything. So I'm actually going to move the camera up on top of this table and uh, just so it'll be a better camera angle as well as uh, be easier to work on. So let me do that real quick. Alright, so I'm going to continue tearing this thing apart. Uh, slowly, carefully, you don't want to be cutting into the battery cells that are on the inside of this. Okay, so at this point, 
I've gotten this end sort of busted off of it. And I should actually be able to get into here. Kind of twist up on that. And the two halves of the case will just simply peel apart. Until you get toward that end and it's might cut a little bit more of this off, but open. Uh, so anyhow, there is the battery. Uh, should be able to pull this out of here. It's not really glued in or anything. And we'll just, okay, or it'll just fall off. Uh, so this is the guts of a 12 cell laptop battery. Uh, the reason why you want a 12 cell one is just because it has more capacity. Uh, usually laptop batteries are only 6 cell. Uh, we're doubling that number, so therefore we have quite a bit more capacity and more run time that way. Uh, so now, kind of clean this mess up and I'll come back. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and peel this tape off of here that's holding the wires in place because we don't really need these wires anymore. Presumably the little circuit board on here is most likely just a protection IC. I don't really think it's uh, like a charging circuit or anything like that. But uh, it does have a little temperature sensor in it, so that's uh, a good thing there for your uh, $10 laptop battery. At least it knows that it's overheating. Now, I believe that the reason this is so cheap... Uh, is because this is for a really old laptop <laughs> that uh, not a whole lot of people have, so they're just uh, pretty much giving the batteries away because uh, they're probably sent around in warehouses taking up space, so they'd like to get rid of them. That's kind of what I'm assuming. Anyway, I'm sure it's a cheap uh, knockoff battery too, but <laughs> so far from what I've seen, it actually looks like it's going to hold quite a bit of its uh, rate capacity, surprisingly. So. Of course, I haven't done any discharge testing. I've only done charge testing on these. But, uh, anyhow, now, I'll go ahead and I'm going to desolder all those wires. Alright, so we'll go ahead and pull these wires off of here. And then after that, I'm going to connect one of our balance cables up to this. And we will go ahead and charge this up so it's at uh, equal potential uh, with this other one over here. Uh, but first, let's go ahead and bring it the meter in here. I'll put it in here upside down so you can read it. And we'll see if this has got voltage. Yeah, about 10.6 volts, no problem there. First cell here is at three and a half. Alright, so this one, three and a half. And the last one, also about three and a half. So they're actually all fairly well balanced. Uh, but I'm actually going to clean some of the gunk that these the tape has left on these batteries. Uh, I think this tape is meant to stay on there forever. And, I didn't really care if it left a whole bunch of residue on it, but uh, let me go ahead and clean that off a bit. Alright, so I'm just going to take a bit of uh, Dugon, or you could just rub in alcohol, or whatever you have on hand. And we'll just uh, clean these off with uh, something like Dugon or uh, more powerful solvents. You want to be a little bit careful because it will take the coloring off of the batteries. Uh, so you don't want to do this forever and it will also wipe the markings off it if you're not careful and if you are careful it will smear them but it won't wipe them off if it doesn't really matter anyway these are uh, just 18650 lithium ion batteries alright so that's at least a little bit better than what it was 
Uh, so now, I'm going to come in here, I'm going to spin this around, and I'm going to grab this balance connector that has the uh, other end of it cut off there. And I'll just double check and I'll make sure that this is going the way that I think it is. Yep, it is. Uh, so this end here with that little divot's the positive. And on this connector, the red wire is the positive. And then this next black wire will be the next cell. And then this black wire will be the next cell. And this black wire will be the last cell. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take this. And I'm going to re-tin these with a bit of fresh solder. All right, so that's all soldered up. Just double check this one more time. I've got the red wire going to the furthest end here. Oh, actually, I actually can just pull it out like that. Make sure that all the wires line up to the same spot on the battery. And I'm gonna go and charge this thing. And I actually have uh, just alligator clip wires that come off of my uh, charger that I can hook up across these two. And. I'll go ahead and charge this thing up, and once I get it charged up, I'm going to take the second stack of batteries and wire it in parallel. Because uh, these are already actually wired up for 12 volts, so all I have to do is hook them in parallel, and it'll pretty much be done. So, anyhow, I'm going to char charge this, and I'll come back once that's done. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to work on is... Uh, getting the batteries actually put together here. So the first thing I'll do is desolder this uh, connector off of this, and we'll have to work on paralleling the two batteries together. All right, so that's the connector off of it, and figure out how to stick these two batteries together. Probably just like that. I'll use some foam tape and get those guys set up. Alright, so I've got this connector removed. Uh, next thing that I'll go ahead and do is peel off this foam uh, sort of padding stuff that they used to keep the batteries from hitting each other, presumably. Or hitting the, uh, the sides of the casing. Alright, so with these somewhat cleaned up, I'll go ahead and get our new foam tape. We're just going to use small little pieces of this stuff in order to reattach the batteries together. And we'll just go right to the end. Alright, so with these little bits of tape on here, we go ahead and peel off the little protective deals and we'll stick our battery packs together. Alright, so the tape has had its little protective cover remove. removed. We should just be able to stick these battery packs together now. Make them one whole battery pack. Um, and the next thing that we'll have to do is actually electrically connect these. So, you know, I think this is the tape that kind of takes a little bit of time to actually set up before it's its full uh, stickiness. But uh, that's all right anyway. I'll grab some wire here and start to uh, going across the all these terminals. All right, so I found a little bit of wire here. And it should be thick enough. I think it's only like 16 gauge wire, but uh, it should be thick enough to at least go across these uh, terminals in between them. So anyhow, I'll go ahead and start by. 
cutting some pieces. They should all be about the same length. So, all right. So there's that. Uh, I'm pretty much designing this in order to handle about 30 amps. Uh, so any one of these wires shouldn't ever have to pull more than 15 amps, which uh, it's a little bit of a stretch for this thin wire, but it's a really short piece, and I think it'll be just fine. In order to solder this, I'm just gonna tin both ends of this wire, and I'll tin or I'll retin all these tabs as well. And the reason why you retin it is you want to get some fresh solder and some fresh flux in there and get everything cleaned up. Since I'm not really feeding solder in as I uh, make the joint as you're supposed to, or as you normally would, this is actually a fairly widely accepted method of soldering. So. So our pack is all wired together as well as uh, stuck together. I don't have main output power wires yet, but the next thing that I'm going to do is discharge these because they should be just pretty close to being full. Yeah, about 12 and a half volts in that. So yeah, I'm gonna hook up the power inverter of these and put a bit of a load on them. I'll also uh, go ahead and put some electrical tape down underneath these little contacts here because I don't really like that they uh, kind of melted the plastic in these batteries. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put some tape down. Uh, so let me get that done real quick and then I'll move on to the discharge testing. Okay, so I've taped these up a little bit. Uh, now we'll move on to the load test. So I've got uh, 240 watts on the 120 volt side. Let's see what happens. 